good morning respected mr ir my friend professor joyanto bandopadhyay professor panda and professor ramsu and my friends in this hall uh bengal you know it is a proverbially land of rivers and you can see one instance of living river and other is drying river left hand side is the ganga itself and right hand side is kongshabuti just downstream of a dam and you can see how the river is made dry there all but uh, you know this proverbially land of rivers uh, many rivers have gone dry many rivers are extremely polluted many rivers are totally wiped out from the map so um, it is a greatest ecological crisis we are facing on right at this moment the ground water table has depleted re reducing the base flow in this river and the ganga itself is gradually going dry the if you look at the a map of bengal we have five river major river system draining north bengal and there are at least seven major system river system basins draining the western part of the bhagirathi hugli river and the ganga itself so, so this is a complex or intricate drainage network which drain the river shopping uh, or the of the delta of bengal and mm, you know that these are not only the conduits of flowing water but also the suspended solids and the mm, you know the ganga brahmaputra system carries highest sediment load in the world uh, it is sometimes 1667 million tons and about 1000 million tons reaching the sea every year so whenever we intervened in any of the rivers since the british rule we forget about the we forgot about the sediment management and that created many problems i will show so what were the objectives one was the flood control since the british rule second was the resuscitation of the navigational status of the kolkata port third was the irrigation and power generation fourth was the premature land reclamation in southern littoral tracts that is on sundarbon these are the major issues we encountered with since the british rule uh, the we had a colonial legacy of river management the british engineers tried to achieve the freedom from flood and the post colonial period was also guided by a british legacy of command and control over the river system extreme spatial and temporal variation in rainfall creates two kind of hydrological extremes one is flood left hand side picture you can see and in right hand side you see another picture where people are digging the sand of the river to to find the water they are on even they walk sometimes more than 3 kilometers to fetch the drinking water this is the part of the western rat tract of midnapur purulia bakura uh, the people of rural bengal used to welcome low intensity flood even this day if you go to malda murshidabad nodia they welcome low intensity flood but they don't want the water to be remain stand still for weeks together they say that let the flood come and go away it will leave behind very fertile silt on the agricultural field and we shall cult cultivate this was the age old culture of bengal hmm. but since the british rule the engineering intervention uh, or embankment building along the bank of the river since the mid 19th century all or rather first part of the 19th century they started to construct linear embankment to achieve the freedom from flood this is kind of linear embankment you see in the picture and this embankment we have about 10500 kilometers of linear embankments in west bengal initially we achieved freedom from low intensity flood but you know flood is a sediment dispersal mechanism and it was linked with the building of this largest delta of the world since they started to embed the river the sediment dispersal mechanism was impaired 
resulting deposition of the sediment load on the river bed. The river bed gradually went high and they started to raise the height of the embankment. Gradually after say about 200 years, some of the rivers have went above the surrounding flood plain and creating a kind of drainage condition. And the flood contour is expanding. Officially, 42% of the geographical area of the state is officially declared as flood prone. But nowadays, whenever a disastrous flood happens, more than 65% area is being flooded. And water remains stand still there for weeks together. There are some other reasons too. I was drawing a cross section. In, 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 in the southern part of the country, uh, of, of our state, you can see the, the, when the river is in spate or during high tide, the river has gone above the surrounding flood plain. You can see the left hand side arrow, the level of the, of, of, of the, of the agricultural land or flood plain and right hand side arrow during the high tide, the river level is above the, above the surrounding flood plain. This has happened after 200 years of embanking the river because we have not allowed the river to spill over the flood plain and deposit the sediment load. Another problem started since mid 19th century when the British engineers started to extend the railway and highway with inadequate culverts beneath it. So it was decided in the British Parliament, the railway line will be the above the highest flood level. So they started to construct embankment. And the, they borrowed the soil uh, along, uh, along the line and it created ditches. And that subsequently became the breeding ground of the malarial mosquito. And there was epidemic in Bengal. Mm -hmm. And after the when the railway line connecting Howrah to Barthuman was constructed, the half of the people of the Hubli and Barthuman district died because of the malaria. And there was a decline in the agricultural production and expansion of, of the flood contours. The North Bengal, if you look at the map of the North Bengal, the rivers are coming from the Himalaya going to Bangladesh. It is not south aligned river system. And the railway line connecting Jalpaiguri with Gopati and National Highway 31 is east-west aligned with inadequate culvert. So there was a devastating flood in 1922 after the, the railway line and highway was laid. And one of our eminent scientists, Acharjo P.C. Roy, he wrote that this government is criminally and willfully responsible for this flood. Similar comment was made by uh, Meghna, Professor Meghnath Shah when there was a devastation in Barthuman. He said, if there is anything called justice in this world, people of Barthuman and Hubli district are entitled to get compensation from railway and highway authority because they have intercepted the passage of the flood. 